an incredible, incredible man with a long history and a lot of lived experience. This part of the presentation is different. And what I love about this event, um, normally we do on a Sunday one speaker that has a whole slot. But now we've been able to have four speakers on four different subject areas, okay, in the name of um, Black History. And all the topics are relevant. We could have done 24 topics with 24 speakers, but we only have limited time. So please, Mr. Derek Clements, the D cutter himself, <laughs> Leon, an award winning <laughs> hairstylist, award winning, okay? Let that sit in the hand for a little while. With a very important history and journey in hair. Um, started off many years ago working with a very, very, very well known and famous hair product company, which I'm not going to name them because I'm um, that honor at least to him. But I would say all our speakers um, were incredibly humble and willing to speak and share their experiences. We don't have to beg. We, we just put it out and um, we were introduced to Mr. Clements. And this man is so keen, so eager to help out, as were the other speakers. Now, we're touched by that, and the spirit of Ubuntu lives on. So, Mr. Derek Clements, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Leon. Uh, fantastic evening. I'm, I'm, I Can sat... you your microphone, sir? I s right. There we go. Thank you, Leon. Uh, thank you, Francine. This has been a, an amazing evening. I sat here diligently listening and I have to say, uh, uh, I must, I'm going to be in context because I think it's important to carry on the, uh, the narrative. So I'd like to start by saying, uh, repeating Revelation 2, uh, verses 9. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And if I, if I can apply that to hair, hair is, has suffered. That's Afro hair has suffered. Afro hair has been, um, there's a new term now called Afrophobia. It's been very, it's trending. But Afro hair is rich. Um, the Afro hair industry is estimated to be worth 2.8 billion pounds a year. Um, and, um, it makes a lot of sense for the people who are making money from Afro hair. The sad reality is, the ingredients and the products that are used to care for our hair, many of which are carcinogenic. So, in a sense, having listened to the three other speakers, um, I should keep this in context because I think many of our women and men are also suffering diseases and hair issues such as alopecia, which is hair loss, um, uh, dry hair, for instance, um, based on the kind of nefarious products that are there uh, that's designed for our hair. So my, my topic tonight is about collapsing the trust to reclaim your tress. And of course, your tress is your hair. And um, I'm going to also talk about the nine principles of Afro hair, which simply means that Afro hair can be morphed into nine different genres, nine different styles, so to speak. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I could talk about many other things, but so basically, there was a time when our mothers and our aunts and our grandmothers did our hair for obvious reasons, to go to church, to go to party, family functions, events, etc., etc. And for whatever reason, we seem to have left the capable hands of our matriarchs and we looked into other i don't know other communities you know who they are they're on the high street making billions and billions and billions of pounds from our hair pretending to provide solutions for our queens with a k woes and quandaries and what has been happening over time Black women have found that the hair is just getting worse. It, it, it hasn't been growing. They've spent, imagine you've spent 2.5 billion pounds a year 
and to no avail, the hair hasn't grown. Um, and we now know what the reasons are. For many years, they've been afro-flaxenizing the hair. You can't afro-flaxenize the hair. That is to say, straighten your hair and expect it to thrive. And we know the reason why we had to do that. We had to conform, I think, uh, because of pressure brought to bear on the community, on, on, on our women. We had to conform, if you like, in the workplace. So we would straighten our hair. We would do things to our hair that, in the long run, create disrepair. It, it, it's sort of almost, you know, damage your hair beyond repair. You've seen women with scalp that's been burnt to a cinder. The hair's been burnt and they're struggling to, to grow the hair. And, and why not? Because, of course, your hair is your beauty. The Bible says it's your crown and your glory. It's your tress. So your tress, in my opinion, is your treasure. So you're supposed to look after it. It's the first thing you see when you see a person coming to you. You see a beautiful woman. You see her hair. And um, we, we should celebrate our um, and descendants from the 60s because what they did was they really, they, 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 they were defiant in terms of celebrating their, uh, their blackness. And so they had the hair as a, as a symbol. Um, so just to keep things very, very simple, what is collapsing the trust to reclaim your trust? So it simply means that black women and men should go back to nature or what nature had provided in the first place um, sustainable ingredients to ensure that their hair and the well-being of the hair would, you know, the hair would be repaired and therefore thus celebrate our self-esteem, our cultural esteem and our black excellence. It's very, it's, it's very important. Um, black women often talk about why is it the hair doesn't grow? Well, of course it wouldn't grow because first of all, the water is harsh, the chemicals you're using is harsh. And another thing that's very important our ancestors have said, we're supposed to use ingredients that are indigenous to us. In other words, if you're, if you're from um, Ghana, for instance, you should use shea butter. If you're from Jamaica, use castor oil, black castor oil. If you're from Grenada, use coconut oil. If you're from Nigeria, use, use palm oil. The, look, the solutions are all there, and they are sustainable. They are antibacterial. They are antifungal. And invariably, they're anti carcinogenic So since we strayed, and we were looking at other people's shops, you know who those people are, they're on our high streets, making a fortune, our hair's not grown. So, what is, so what's been interesting, um, there's always an antidote, and I think the antidote lies in us. We are defiant. And so what we, have, what we are lucky to have is that every generation there's a renaissance. There's been multiple renaissances over the years. Um, let me just, for instance, stray a little bit and talk about the uh, Tigan, Tigan Law, 1786 in America, in Louisiana, when black women, hair looks so gorgeous, a uh, law was passed to forbade them to wear their hair in public. Can you imagine that? So Afro hair has gone through numerous challenges over the centuries, even though it's the first hair that arrived on the planet and has been around the longest and is the most beautiful. It is, in my opinion, the mother of all hairs. But yet, in, the, in 1786, in Louisiana, in America, um, unfortunately, Caucasian women were, in, were, were, were threatened by freed slaves. I, although I hate to use the word slaves, I prefer to use the word POW, prisoners of war. So they were looking so gorgeous with their gorgeous hair that the law was passed. The law is, it, the law is called Tigan, Tigan. Tignan law, T-I-G-N-O-N, Tignan, Tignan law. And that law forbade black women from wearing their hair in public. So when you see our women wearing scarves, it might be, if you like, a consequence of that law. So, but what's interesting, even though they were barred from wearing their hair in public, the, the hair, they found a way to, uh, to embellish their hair. And so the scarves look gorgeous. They look beautiful. And, and I love the word embellish. I don't like to talk about, uh, I don't like to pathologize my race. I don't like to talk about self-injury. I do like to talk about celebration. Everything about us is beautiful. Hence the reason why I use the term, the, 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 the verse from um, um, Revelation. I, I know your tribulation. I know your struggles. I know your poverty, but you were rich. So therefore, our hair, in spite of the challenges that we've saved, it's rich. 
So let's go back now. Let's talk about collapsing the trust. We have to forget about these high strip shops that are, 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 are just sprung up over, over time and they are making a fortune and invariably they are very rude to our women, our, our queens. So what our queens need to do is go back. Go back, as Sam Kofa says. Go back to get it. And what are you trying to get? You're going back to find sustainable ingredients to maintain and to care for your hair. And it's simple things. This is a cocoa from Grenada. It's in Jamaica, it's in Ghana, it's in Nigeria, it's in every part of the world. This cocoa has hair growing properties in it. So you break the cocoa, if it's green, if you, if you guys are familiar with the cocoa, many of you who are perhaps born in the UK may have seen a cocoa, this one's a bit dry, but if it's green, you break this cocoa, and in this cocoa, there's a wonderful sub 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 filmy substance, and it's indeed, it's indeed a conditioner. There's another wonderful thing in Jamaica, I think it's called Single Bible, the Rastas use it for many, many years, they pick this they pick this plant, they break the plant, and the plant lavas. Natural shampoo. I've got an amazing fruit from Zimbabwe. This is called Bohabab. This fruit is perfect for conditioning your hair and invariably consuming. So when you break the fruit, it looks a bit like that. And you could make porridge, you could make hair growing conditioners, all sorts of things. The point I'm trying to make is that in your culture, in your community, wherever you are, you, there are there are numerous hair growing um, ingredients that, that's, that goes towards healing your hair because we are living in a very difficult time. There are lots of pathogens in the air. We, you know, we live in, in, in COVID country. And since the earlier speakers talked about these numerous dis, dis eases, hair if it's if if you're using the wrong ingredients can also impact the growth and health of your hair on both men and women and you will find over time that your hair will be challenged there's some there's an inter, in, interesting condition called ccca or central centrifugal um alopecia ccca and that is simply because it is it is um it is uh triggered by um, inflammation. And so since the thing we eat equally can cause harm to our hair. And why? Because the hair grows at a cellular level. Hair doesn't grow from the outside, it grows from the inside. So it's imperative that our queens and our kings, our emperors, use sustainable products to look after the hair. If you are going to use products, be mindful of what's in the products. You have to read the labels. There are three most damaging ingredients that can cause havoc to the queens. They're, pa they're called parabens, and invariably they're sulfates, and others are like lanolin. They are very, these are damaging. So you have to be mindful of what goes into your hair. You may pay a bob or two more, but it's worthwhile. Because in the long run, if your hair is your glory, it is your crown, it is your tress, it is your treasure, you should look after it and should not really um, worry about the cost of the item, but it should be affordable. So my quest is to ensure that we provide sustainable products for our customers. So that said, I have developed a product line um, for my co customer and for the black community at large. It's called Derek Clement Hair Care System. And it's a system because I don't think a, a, just a regular shampoo on its own or a conditioner on its own is enough to sustain and to care for your hair. Because your hair needs three fundamental things for its well-being. It needs moisture, it needs hydration, and it needs nutrients. And all those things I just mentioned before, they have in them nourishing ingredients, hydrating ingredients and moisturizing ingredients. Since you can't go to the Caribbean or Africa to get those, you'll have to seek uh, reliable and sustainable products. There's lots of, there's lots of black 
um, brands that they're doing marvelous things in the community. There are loads of local brands. Recently, I think since um, COVID, there's been a lot of black women and men who are manufacturing homemade, reliable products. So you, it means that you may have to work a bit harder to find out who's in your community making these products. Um, so I manufacture as well, having been doing hairdressing for over 40 years. It's, in, it's imperative that I ensure that my clients and, and the community would be could access a worthwhile products. So the system that I've created is not just about a shampoo and a conditioner and Bob's your uncle. Bear in mind the water in England, this country is very harsh. It's, it might be softer in the north, up north or the Midlands, but London, the water is hard since it's been recycled uh, eight to nine times. So that water is just full of garbage in it, right? So even that could have an impact on your hair. So the system that I've created is it means that you shampoo your hair once. I'm going to show you what my shampoo looks like. It's a shampoo. I, and shampooing can be damaging. And the reason why I say shampoo can be damaging, when you buy a shampoo, the thing you look forward to most is the lather and the suds. And I promise you, because you like that lather and the suds, it is what attracts you to the, uh, to the shampoo in the first place. For the shampoo to lather, and to create that suds and that feel good factor, it must have some very dodgy ingredients in them. So don't, don't try to shampoo your hair too many times. Too much shampooing robs the hair of natural moisture and natural nutrients and nourishment. Okay, it inhibits hair growth as well. And the reason why I say that, since your hair grows at a cellular level, the hair has its own ecosystem. It is quite capable of nourishing itself by itself without our intervention. But since we live in a modern world, we need other things to help and to and to assist the hair growth because of the debris out there, the dirt in the atmosphere and so on and so forth. So my system begins with a shampoo, which I say to my clients, shampoo your hair once. Just one shampoo. But you could continue to shampoo your hair multiple times using the next step in my range called the co-wash. And what the co-wash is, is simply a conditioner that it, it cleanses, but it doesn't lather. It provides nutrients and moisture to the hair. And then after that, unlike conventional shampoos and conditioners, you condition afterwards. So the range consists of three things, a shampoo, a co-wash, and a conditioner. Right? Whereas most other, most traditional people don't do that. They just simply wash, shampoo, and the condition. After that, it's imperative that you moisturize, you hydrate, and you provide nutrient to your hair. Because let's face it, guys, your hair is your crown and it's your glory. You've got to look after it. And it shouldn't be a, a, a kind of quick fix. You should spend time. My, my 17-year-old daughter, 17, she spends practically half a day. Her hair goes down her back naturally. No chemicals, nothing. She spends half a day pampering and nourishing her hair. Right, so the system consists of three tiers. I've just shown you the first tier, which consists of shampoo, co-wash and conditioner. The second tier is all about feeding the hair, which consists of the bohabab that I showed you earlier on. This is the fruit from Zimbabwe, and this is what I've got out of the fruit. It's called a nourishing mist. Okay, you might laugh and say to yourself, well, Derek, you're born, I mean, you know, you should, your hair should be growing profusely. <laughs> of course not. Yeah, baldness has a lot to do with your DNA. And so with my mother's DNA, you get the baldness from your mother. In my mother's DNA, or her chromosomes, we get the balding head. So at 40 years of age, I start going bald. So what I do, I, the emphasis is on my beard, so my beard goes really profusely. So you, you spray the nourishing mist on your hair, ladies or your beard and that's to give the hair nourishment and then what you that's followed by using what i call a hydrator because the hair is hydration this is made from jamaican black castor oil jamaican black castor oil is one of the best it's 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 renowned it's, it's the alexia of, of oils it has all the things that your hair needs antibacterial antifungal anti-carcinogenic and antimicrobial, loads and loads of things that you handed. It is the elixir of, 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 of hair oils.
Because we need oils. Jamaican black castor oil. This is called the hydrator. And then, of course, the meat and potatoes of the brand in the tier two is the leaving moisturizer. We are now moved into an era called, or a renaissance called the natural hair movement. The natural hair movement means a lot to me because it simply means that the sisters, when I talk about claiming your trust, in that movement for the first time, the sisters have collapsed the trust in other people's uh, bits and pieces and they've claimed the trust. That to me, that, that's to me in their own hair. So what you see around London, in New York, in Africa, in the Caribbean, women are wearing the natural hair, huge afros, lots of twist outs, locks, the lot. And so for those styles, you need the Derek Clement leaving moisturizer. So you apply that with the hydrator and the nourishing mist, and that's a, that's daily nutrients for the hair because your hair needs three things to assist it in this growing procedure. That's moisture, hydration, and nourishment. And there's three more things, guys, because bear in mind, as I said, it's a system. There's three more things. And why not? You should pamper yourself. You are a queen. And in many cases, you are an emperor. So in the tradition of our culture, that is, if you are uh, from the Caribbean or if you're African, our ancestors, our mothers and our aunts and the matriarch, they went about feeding. I use the word feeding, but I think for a long time we used the word grease. I don't like that term. I'd rather feeding. So you could see the traditional image of the daughter sitting beneath her mother's or grandmother's or aunt laps and the grandmother or the aunt is endeavoring to feed or grease the scalp and the hair and moisturize her hair and then she will, she will then go into braiding or combing the hair. Okay, and so what I've created is a sheen oil mist. This is very oily. This is again from the Jamaican black castor oil because of the properties that this oil has in it. Jamaican black castor oil. Secondly, uh, you would then use, I've created in the, in, in the phase, in the tier three, the hair and scalp food. This is made from hemp, right? Or basically what we call ganja. And what this does, this helps to assist women whose hair, for instance, is suffering from traction alopecia or CCCA, which is, again, as I said, um, alopecia of the scalp, which is very, very common. What causes that type of alopecia, CCCA, it's, it, it's in the scalp, it's central, centrifugal, it's in the middle, and it, it, it goes bald and money. It, 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 so women suffer from, from this alopecia. And w one of the things that causes that is high blood pressure. So if you are taking high blood pressure medication in variable tablets, it will inhibit your hair growth. Why? Because high blood pressure medication is a, is a, is a calcium blocker. Your hair needs minerals and nutrients for it to grow. So if the body is suffering any kind of dis-ease, what the body does, what the, the body does, it, it would remove the medication going to the hair and provide it to the part of the body that's damaged or in, in disrepair. So the hair suffers. And unfortunately, cal um, high blood pressure medication is one of those medications that blocks calcium going into your hair cells and it goes elsewhere to look after your bits and pieces. So you have to bear in mind, ladies and gentlemen, prevention is better than cure if you try to prevent getting high blood pressure medication by going back to using sustainable foods that our ancestors provided for our well-being. We know what they are. All the gingers and the turmerics and all of these wonderful things, all the herbs and spices that we were socialized to take as children back home. We need to go back to nature, as I mentioned before, Sankofa movement. Go back to get it, okay, because it will sustain you. And last but not least, we've got the hair and scalp food. Again, this is made from Jamaican black castor oil and shea butter. All those have shea butter in them with Jam uh, Jamaican black castor oil and vitamin E. And the Jamaican black castor oil with the shea butter from Ghana and Nigeria, they are just amazing. They are ubiquitous. They are, as I said, the, the, the elixir of oils. They are brilliant. They're good for our well-being and for our health. And also, it's not just for your hair. The way, of, the way my product is designed, this is my sample, guys, right? The way it's designed, it's not just for the hair. 
It's not just alone for that, but I put this on my lips. I put this on my bald head like this, and it goes on my skin and all over the place. It's not just for the hair, but it's for your skin as well. All right, my daughter, my five-year-old daughter uses it. My 30-year-old daughter uses it. My 17-year-old daughter uses it. It's all from our ancestors, okay? I, as the ancestor says, only use products that are indigenous to your ancestors. Don't use things like olive oil. That's not indigenous to us. That's for another people. Use the things that's from your backyard. You know, uh, you know what Nigerians do. They love the palm oil. You know, Jamaican love the castor oil. Grenadians love the coconut oil. Ghanaians love the shea butter. Go back and get it. And therefore, what you're doing is collapsing the trust you have in those high street shops that are selling nothing but carcinogenic substances and use indigenous, holistic, and sustainable products. And hair growth is also, as I, I use the word holistic, hair growth is holistic. You have to be in a good state of mind. You have to be whole, psychologically, physiologically, mentally, spiritually, for hair growth. To, and because women are dying for the hair to grow, but you, how could your hair grow if it's been bombarded with carcinogenic substances? It doesn't make no sense. You can't fight these pathogens in the air if you're not looking after yourself. In other words, hair growth depends also on good immunity. If you're anti immune then your hair will also suffer which gonna, which causes inflammation inflammation triggers alopecia alopecia means hair loss and men also suffers from alopecia it's called alopecia barbe where your beard would fall off and you get balling balling beard i remember having balling beard a few years ago when i was a young man studying very hard and my beard went bald at the bottom and i now realize your stress stress causes your beard and your hair to go bald Okay, guys, and so that is essentially what we must do. Collapse the trust to reclaim your tress. Because your tress is your treasure. It's your crown and it's your glory. As I said, Revelations 2, chapter 9. I know your tribulation. I know your poverty. I know your works. But you are indeed rich. That's a likened to hair, hair, our hair has been going through all kinds of problems over the years, over the centuries, over the decades. But yet, what are, there's something wrong in the atmosphere that telling our children that the hair is worthless. When in actuality, our hair is the only hair type that grows up. It defies gravity. It grows.